Hello, hello. Good evening. My name is Heike Demster and I'm the Director of Engagement and Outreach at Young Arts. My pronouns are she, her. The Young Arts Campus is situated on the traditional homeland of Native nations, including the Tequesta, the Calusa, the Taino, and today the Makusuki and the Seminole. We pay our respect to the elders past, present, and future and recognize their continued existence and contributions to our community. Thank you all for joining us this evening. This is an info session on the singer-songwriter category of the voice discipline at Young Arts. Young Arts identifies exceptional young artists amplifies their potential and invests in their lifelong creative freedom. And the young arts journey really starts with the competition. We want to encourage all artists aged 15 to 18 or in grades 10 to 12 to apply to young arts. Once selected, all award winners are offered a lifetime of artistic support and ongoing connections with a network of peers and mentors. So before we start, I have a few quick housekeeping notes for you. Uh, the info session is being recorded, so please, if you want to protect your privacy, change your uh, screen name to like first name only. And if you have questions at any time, please raise your hand or use a chat feature. We will handle all the questions as we during breaks uh, in between the session. Um, it is of course my pleasure to introduce you all to the speakers today. We have my colleague Nidra Ward, Associate Director of Winner Programs at Young Arts. We have Voice National Selection Panelist Chris Sampson, and we have 2023 Young Arts winner in Voice and U.S. Presidential Scholar in the Arts, Sawyer Rabin. Uh, Chris Sampson has enjoyed a diverse career in music as an educator, songwriter, performer, producer, and arts administrator and author. In 2009, Samson founded the popular music program at the USC Thornton School of Music, which is considered to be the first of its kind at a major university. As a professor of songwriting, Samson students have penned number one hit songs, won Grammy Awards, won national songwriting competitions, signed major recordings and publishing contracts, toured nationally and internationally, and have placed numerous songs in television and film. Thompson is a lifetime voting member of the Songwriters Hall of Fame, a member of BMI, and serves on the advisory board of the Orange County High School of the Arts and the Los Angeles County High School of the Arts. Sawyer Rabin is a singer-songwriter from Newport Beach, California. He's a 2023 U.S. Presidential Scholar in the Arts and a Young Arts winner with distinction. He has been singing and playing guitar, piano, bass, drums, and performing since he was five years old. He records and produces his music as well as projects for other artists at his home studio. Recently, he has been performing in Los Angeles in numerous venues, including the Whiskey A Go Go. Rabin will be attending USC in the fall as a recipient of the trustee scholarship and a member of the Honors College, pursuing a double major in popular music, performance and music industry. So thank you all again for joining us. I pass on the mic to Chris. Thank you. Thank you so much, Heike, and welcome everybody um, to our Young Arts Singer Songwriter Info Session. Looking forward to talking to all of you. Um, are you guys looking forward to it? Send up an emoji or something. Let me see, let me see you. Can I see you? There we go. There we go. Nice. Good. So nice to have you guys here. My pronouns are he, his, and I really appreciate that intro by Heike. I uh, don't have a whole lot to add as to what she, she said. Um, I am uh, have enjoyed a, a career in a lot of different seasons as a songwriter, as a producer, as a performer, as a recording artist, an educator, an author. And so I've been so fortunate to see music, music making in the career of music at pretty much every angle. For those of you who are interested, my current research actually involves developing a pedagogy for multi-instrumentalists of which, of course, songwriting is an integral part of that activity. And so that's what's been keeping me busy um, most recently. Um, so today, we're gonna make sure that you get all the information that you need to feel like you um, are equipped to apply to Young Arts, as a singer songwriter, we have all your questions answered and make sure that you are very well aware of what you are applying for. This is a very special program. You're going to learn that as we have our conversation. Young Arts is a very special organization. 
I will just speak from my own personal experiences that I have yet to find another organization that supports artists in the most meaningful and impactful way that Young Arts does. It is just nothing but heart and is the most powerful platform that I have seen for young artists moving forward. Um, and now I'm going to go on script, let you know sort of the bullet points they want me to say, which is Young Arts is one of the only organizations in the US that supports artists across 10 disciplines at all stages of development from beginning and uh, to their advanced career as they pursue a life in arts and continuing into their careers. Um, the Young Arts experience begins with the application, and that's what we're really going to spend some time on today to make sure that, again, you feel uh, well informed and equipped to be able to file this application. Um, artists age 15 through 18 or grades 10 through 12 in the US are highly encouraged to apply in the discipline of their choice, in our case, singer songwriter. And as we go through the evaluation process, you have the opportunity to be recognized at two award levels, uh, Young Arts Award winner or a Young Arts Award winner with distinction. A Young Arts Award winner with distinction is invited to attend the Young Arts Awards, um, uh, sorry, the Young Arts Week, which is located in Miami where uh, Young Arts is based. Regardless of what your winning status is, should you be selected, um, you receive a lifetime of artistic support and ongoing connection with the extraordinarily robust network of peers and mentors. And this includes grants, and residencies, and funding opportunities. So like I said, remarkable organization doing remarkable things. I'm very, very proud to be affiliated with this. Okay, let's talk now in detail about our singer songwriting category. So the singer songwriter actually is part of the voice discipline. So when you apply, you are actually part of a community of vocalists who include singer songwriter, pop vocalists, jazz vocalists, and classical vocalists. And as such, me and my colleagues who are in the pop jazz and classical category form the panel to do the final evaluation of your application okay so um that's one very interesting quality about this is that you should be aware of is, is that this is part of the voice category um however it's unique because as opposed to pop jazz and classical which sings already existing repertoire the singer songwriters um, obviously are presenting all original compositions and completely from there as well as being multifaceted because they are self accompanying themselves in one fashion or another. So even though the singer songwriter falls into our voice category, um, it's unique. It's got its specialty to it. And um, uh, I think you'll find that out. So what does this look like? So what I've done is I've just assembled a, a sampling of videos that you can find on YouTube. If you just um, search in YouTube, uh, Young Art Singer Songwriter, you will find lots of examples of what our historic singer songwriters look and sound like. And I really encourage you to sort of thumb through those videos so that you can get a chance to uh, wrap your head around sort of um, people who have come before. But I've assembled a playlist, a really quick playlist of four just so that you can hear some of the range we're only just going to listen to a brief sample maybe 45 seconds of each but i want you to hear a little bit of a sample of numerous um previous participants so let me just do some screen sharing i'll be right with you and let's start with tippy this is tippy ballady Little house on a hill, how do you stand so tall, so still, when the bad weather all around doesn't knock you down? 
Your roof's not missing a shingle. Through non crack windows, I watch the stars twinkle. The storm is a brewing, but I'm still viewing the sky. Little house. All right, let's take a look at another example. Francisco Hay, New York, New York. I can see it looking in your eyes You've finally found the answer What you're looking for, no, you can find I can see it looking in your eyes So sorry to cut these short, but you get the idea. We're just trying to run through these. And let's hear one more example. Did you guys see those okay? I got a nod. I got a thumbs up. Fabulous. Okay. So, um, and we're going to show you um, another video here coming up from our other guest here soon. But I want you to see that. And I, what I hope that your takeaway is from those little samples, and like I said, please dive into the YouTube channel to even see more examples, is, is that Young Arts doesn't define singer-songwriter as one thing. Singer-songwriter is a very, very broad umbrella that welcomes and encourages artists from really all genres. Um, we, we welcome hip hop artists, rap artists, country artists, indie artists, um, pop artists. Um, this is the hallmark of what music creation is and we love its range of styles. And so we, uh, as you're sort of putting together what how you might apply, give that some thought that you want to make sure that your true authentic artist self stands out and not be worried about maybe a preconceived idea of what singer songwriter means because we 
um, have the most wide open interpretation of that label. Okay, really music creators of all likes within the popular music field uh, are welcome and encouraged uh, to apply. Okay, um, let's talk a little bit about the application requirements. You're going to be able to find those um, in the link that was just put into the chat. So the timing was uh, impeccable. So uh, take a look at that. And here's what you're going to find. We have recently um, changed our application requirements. So if you've looked into Young Arts in years past, please perk up your ears because we've made a few adjustments and that might warrant some questions from you, okay? But basically, to be able to apply, you're going to file the application and Nidra will confirm. I believe the uh, absolute deadline is October 13th. Yes. Thank you. Um, and October 13th at 11.59 p.m. Um, and as part of your application, what you're going to do is create and upload um, video recordings of you performing three original songs, okay? All of your songs have to be 100% original, the words and the music by you. So we have to know and be assured that what we're reviewing is entirely created by you, okay? Now, here's where the change comes in. We are, going to allow the use of self-produced tracks this year, okay? Previous years, we hadn't, but this year we are going to allow that if you have self-produced tracks, that you can use those as part of that. You can use those for up to two out of the three. We would like to see at least one song in which you are self-accompanying yourself in real time and not using tracks. Hopefully that's, that is outlined in the uh, requirements very, very clearly, okay? Now, let's talk about these tracks a little bit. If you decide to put an arrangement together, whether maybe you work in Logic or Ableton or something like that, um, the track also has to be entirely 100% original produced by you, okay? And we have to be able to document and verify that. You may also not submit anything with any um, unlicensed samples, okay? So all of the sounds, everything that we hear, you can tell I'm making this a point of emphasis, uh, has to be created 100% by you. Great, all right? So um, with that, that might add a little bit of um, uh, technical balances for you. So as you're creating your video, you're going to want to make sure that the balances are correct, okay? We're going to want to make sure that we can hear your voice. Remember, it's a voice category, that we can understand your lyrics and that there's clarity to this. This does not mean, and it is not required, that you have an expensive production setup that makes this happen. As a matter of fact, you should be able to complete your Young Arts application on consumer-level electronics. We've seen simple cell phone footage work just fine. However, you do need to at least um, make sure, and I recommend that you do tests, uh, test runs on your um, recordings to make sure that the balance is correct, meaning that we hear your voice correctly, that your accompaniment is not overwhelming your voice, and that we're able to um, hear everything clearly, okay? You're gonna also submit a PDF copy of your lyrics because that will actually be also part of the um, evaluation process, okay? Um, let's talk about the evaluation process because you should know that when you apply to Young Arts, your audition materials are looked at very, very thoroughly. And they first start off by being reviewed by a national team. You will be actually reviewed by uh, a team of professional songwriters who are incredibly experienced, located all over the country, who are going to be able to look at it um, through uh, their lens and be able to um, make an initial evaluation. Then, based upon that evaluation, it will then get a second and perhaps even a third review by arriving to me 
and my panel colleagues as we will do the final review on the national basis. And like I said, the end result um, hopefully could result in you being awarded a winner or a winner with distinction, okay? Um, once again, I really encourage you to check out the website and the, um, uh, the PDF that has the guidelines for recording your audition because it's got some really good tips, such as just making sure, once again, there's good balances, um, making sure that the camera is in location. We do not need any um, uh, panning. We don't need any multi-camera. Simple is better. We really want to um, get a sense of who you are, all right? And uh, we actually want to see it in its most authentic form. So um, no pitch or timing software such as Autotune, Melodyne um, is permitted because, we, again, we're really wanting to make sure that we uh, hear you, OK? Um, fantastic. So when you submit that, your next question might be, so what do you look for in these auditions? And it's a lot of things. We, 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 we definitely look at you very holistically um, as a songwriter, as an artist, as a musician, OK? So in no particular order, because we look at these as an, in an entirety, as a total package, we're going to um, look at, obviously, what we think is the quality of your songs. Through your songs, are we um, getting a sense that you've got a solid handle on the songwriting craft? Do we have a sense that you um, are original? Are you saying something new? Are you getting our attention? So your songs have to obviously be a standout. So that's part of the review. Um, we're going to be listening for your vocal quality. This is um, a performance oriented program. If you are chosen for this particular program as a winner of distinction, you will be asked um, and get the opportunity to perform in Miami on the New World Symphony stage, which is, are, are the videos that you uh, saw. So we are going to look at not just the quality of your voice, but your performance dynamic. I want to see, we want to see through these videos um, that you have the ability to engage an audience. Do you have the ability to communicate your song? Are you connected with your lyric? Are you emotionally connected with the song? We want to see evidence of your performance uh, with that, OK? Um, and then we want to hear overall musicianship, things that you would probably already assume. Um, uh, do you have good tone quality? Are you singing and playing in tune? Is your music interesting? Do you have you know, appropriate, stylistically appropriate harmonic or rhythmic vocabulary, those types of things. So we look at this as in a very holistic way to come to our final um, uh, evaluation for all of this, okay? Um, I'm gonna guess that that probably generated lots of questions. However, before we get to questions, let's, we'll carve out time um, uh, towards the end to answer everybody's question, make sure we get to everything. I want to introduce you to one of my favorite people um, and uh, uh, was a winner with distinction last year uh, at Young Arts. And I think that there's no better way to introduce this person than to show a sample of their video from last year. So one second, let me pull this up. I wrote the song about the day that I had to drive my mom to the hospital. And that was one of the scariest days of my life because my mom's the strongest person that I know. And so this song is for her. I love you, mom. I thought I'd feel better than I did before. 
before, but I took a wrong turn, took the long way home. I couldn't find out where you were. It scared me. Breathe in and breathe out and lean over the gurney. I'll wait by the door. I'll try not to worry. You're holding your head like a child. It scares me. Oh, but shadows of airplanes over the 405. They watch me from the window as I begin to cry. Everything's in. That was just an excerpt from Sawyer's performance last year at um, Young Arts Week, and we still haven't forgiven Sawyer for making everybody cry during all of that. So it was it was a moment. It was definitely a moment. So please welcome to tell us about their Young Arts experience, Sawyer Raven. Hey, Sawyer. Oh my God. Oh, sorry, that was really uncomfortable. But thank you for sharing that. Um, I, that, that is actually the second time I have watched that performance. Um, and the first one was in June, which is six months after that happened. And everyone was like, why haven't you watched it? Why haven't you watched it? I don't know. That's just a me thing. I, I can't watch myself back, but I hope, I hope you liked it. I actually messed up the lyrics three times during that performance. Um, so, and I think about it every day before I go to sleep. So uh, I'll never forgive myself, but Thank you guys so much for coming and I'm so glad y'all are all interested. It's good to see some familiar faces in here. Um, and I'm Sawyer Raven, I'm a songwriter. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I had the absolutely fantastic opportunity to go to Miami. It was just the best week of my life. But I wanna talk about how a little bit of the pre, the during and the post kind of my journey with Young Arts, which has been, as Chris said, I, and I concur, like the best and most supportive organization that I've ever been a part of and I've done a lot of different intensives through songwriting through a lot of different colleges and a lot of different programs and this one by far is the most powerful um so I actually heard about Young Arts because I attended Grammy camp last year and Chris said something about him being on a Young Arts panel very nonchalantly and I was like oh okay and then I and then my mom like a couple of months later, I was like, have you heard of this Young Arts thing? And I was like, oh, yeah, I think Chris like said something about it one time. And then she was like, this is amazing. You have to apply right now. I was like, OK, I really didn't really I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. Um, and we kind of looked into it and we were like, oh, my God, like Miami, all expenses paid. Go play your songs and meet people like that sounds pretty darn awesome. Um, and I was like, OK, so I'll apply. I was an incoming senior. Anybody else incoming senior who is raise your hand? All right, all right, good luck. Common app open today, so I'm praying for all of you. Um, I'm so glad I don't have to do that anymore. But um, so I basically, because uh, they ask you for three videos and I had already filmed a lot of my college auditions over the summer um, as I was applying for a songwriter. So I'd say my biggest number one tip is reduce, reuse, recycle your application videos because it takes me forever to get a really good take. And I spent like a whole day, like six hours, redoing it and making sure I get the absolute best take I possibly can to present myself to um, these panels. Because the hard thing about being virtual is like, it's not as easy for me at least to connect or show off my skill set as it is in person. It's, they're much, they're able to be much more nitpicky because they can rewind you, they can rewatch you, they can go back and I can rewatch me, but I don't because I can't. But I am super nitpicky with the video process for every college I applied to, everything I ever applied to. So. Take your time with your videos and hopefully um, some colleges that you are applying to if you're a senior um, also need videos. Um, so I would say um, that's what I did. I applied to Belmont and then I used videos that I sent to Belmont. Uh, I sent them to uh, Young Arts. And I'd say uh, when you're thinking about pieces to choose, this may be like common sense to a lot of people, but sometimes it isn't. Like think about um, 
what kind of a range you can present to these people um, and how much and what you can show off in terms of diversity. So the song you heard me play that was Shadows of Airplanes. Um, and that was a ballad, piano ballad. And weirdly, piano is like my third instrument as opposed to guitar being my secondary. So I sent in Shadows of Airplanes because it was my powerful acoustic storytelling ballad, heartbreak, ouch, all the, the above. And um, then I sent in a mid, a song called My Dryasis that was more guitar focused um, and had more interesting melodies and had a different sort of style. Um, uh, yeah, just still storytelling, still in my own genre. So it still sounds similar to Shadows of Airplanes because I wrote both of them, but different in its own right. And then I did a super upbeat song called Indirect Collision, which has like kind of more pop, pop centric melodies and uh, catchier hooks. Um, and so there's like, obviously you wrote all three of these things. So there's going to be a common thread. So I would say go for like ballad, mid, up tempo. That's at least the, the rules that I like to follow when I'm sending people new, new songs. Uh, but if you don't have that sort of an exact map, I would just do as, as diverse three songs as you possibly can be. Um, and make sure you like them because you might be performing one in front of a lot of people, um, which is very scary, but also very fun. So there's a couple tips for, in terms of application. It's super easy, please don't stress it. It's, yeah, it's super easy. One, two, three, and you're done. Just don't, don't spend too long on your videos. Don't be like me, um, but, but, do, but do take your time. Um, okay, so there's your pre, and then you get a phone call, hopefully, in November saying that you've won something, which would be amazing. And if you do, I, I remember that phone call and I freaked out um, and it was, such an incredible day. And I was like, wait, what do you mean? I don't have to pay for this. That makes no sense. Um, and that's just the beauty of Young Arts because Young Arts is an incredible organization. But um, going to Miami uh, is pretty darn incredible. And as some of these, I've done a lot of these workshops before, but um, the thing that makes Young Arts difference, different is it's much more performance-based. I've been to a Grammy camp. That's very songwriting based, but in within Grammy camp, you're writing for other people. You're learning how to write in different styles. You're learning how to write... Um, co-write with people you're learning about how to make it as a songwriter specifically not necessarily a singer songwriter although there is components of that running through this but young arts specifically is like I felt like was the most artist focused thing I'd ever attended and I was we already know you're good songwriters everyone in here if you have interest in this you are you're a good songwriter and you're doing something right being here but going to young arts you're just going to take your artistry and your ability to like present a thing on a stage to a whole nother level. I came home from Miami and I played all my songs again for my family. They're like, that sounds so different than it did before you went. And I'm like, that's because it was like 12 hours of intense training every single day with the best of the best people. Um, yeah, it focuses so much more on your performance and your songs are already good. That's why you're there. So you're getting on stage in front of big, big crowds and you're working on where to place your eyes and you're working on how well do you actually know your songs? Are you ready to put this on stage? Like, what can you do to bring it to the next level? Um, and then I guess we perform the first day. That's, that's, that's one of the things is our performance is the first night, which is terrifying because you get to a new place and then you're like, oh, it's time to play in front of a giant room. Uh, have fun. Uh, it takes the training rails off real quick, but you get so much feedback on your performance and all of the, the guests, the amazing guests that Chris brings in um, to help guide you now have seen you in a high pressure situation and then can explain to you how best to take that performance to the next level. So I talked a lot, you know, in that video, you can kind of hear my breath controls terrible. Um, well, one, because I was nervous, but also because I had never really thought about it before. And I remember the, the day after, you brought in a guest. I cannot remember her name, but she was brilliant. And she helped me with my breath control on that bridge where I Joan, lost it. She, she, Joan yeah, Joan. Rader. Joan yes. Rader. Mm -hmm. she is an angel and I love her. And she helped me with my breath control on the bridge. Um, and like, they can get really specific because there's only going to be so many of you there. Um, so they give you really specific, really targeted feedback on how better to tell your story and how better to communicate it and how to just be be an artist and 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 share the stories that you're you're writing down um and then at the end of the week you also get evaluated again and you're able to present two other pieces which is where that range comes in and throughout the week you'll play a bunch of your songs um and also meet 
some pretty darn awesome fellow songwriters, people that I'm still super close friends with to this day. And you just get tons of feedback, tons of collaboration. And it's just this massive group of amazingly talented artists from all these different disciplines. And I just have connections for, for days in every city I go to. I try to meet up with somebody from Young Arts, from where, whatever these uh, organizations I've been a part of. Um, I don't know if I, and then I, the presidential scholar, I don't know if I, people want me to talk about that or like that process, I guess. I sure. Don't know if that's a, I mean, it's just quickly for all you seniors, you're eligible for presidential scholar. So make sure you look out for that when you apply, but um, you'll get interviewed by the panel towards the end of the week. Um, and then that will start your process, whether or not you get selected as a, as a nomination from, from that panel. But you also will get evaluated again on two other songs. Um, there's just a lot of evaluation throughout the week, but that is not what you should focus on. Uh, and that's the one thing my mom said to me before I stepped on the plane is don't think about the money, don't think about winning, don't think about anything. You are there to have fun and learn and soak up information. So please don't actually stress about that because it will just happen and then they'll be over and you'll be like, oh, I guess that's done now. It goes by way faster than you think it will. And also the panel and your fellow songwriters, like they were just so supportive and so encouraging. I did not feel nervous for five seconds. That's a lie, but I'll tell it to you anyway. Um, but I really didn't like I you're just sitting in rooms with just these amazing people, and these amazing teachers who are all there to watch you succeed. And it was just genuinely cha totally changed my life. I wish I could do it again. And it was I guess this is this will hit home for you guys because you're songwriters specifically. I felt like my entire life I've been writing songs in my room alone um, and had I mean, I've co-written a lot, but uh, I've definitely it's an isolating art form because you are doing everything. And to be, to have the kind of validation um, and the kind of support system and to be shown that you are not alone at trying to make it as an artist at your age um, and to be shown that, and to have people put their faith in you and to uh, perform on these big stages and, and just all the validation is like something I've never <laughs> experienced before in my life. And it was just the most incredible thing. And it, it pushed me into, um, the post of that Young Arts Week, which was the best week of my life. In post, I was so much more confident uh, as an artist. I had all this validation. I knew where I had a direction. I have connections. I have um, professional uh, professionals that I can reach out to at any time. Um, a total huge network across the United States of people um, that are here to support uh, what I'm doing. And uh, I mean, I've just been so much more of a confident songwriter and confident in my abilities and I mean I obviously went into a bunch of college auditions and some did something right um, but but I felt so much more prepared for those kind of high pressure situations because of what I went through at Young Arts Week I felt ready to step into the next chapter and and I was very nervous about going to college for a long time but now I feel like oh I'm ready for this like this is where I'm supposed to be and where I'm supposed to be going and I obviously haven't been a winner for very long but they take very good care of you in the post and I get weekly emails. There's um, Young Arts Post, which is a total like networking. It's like, um, oh, what's the one? It's like kind of like a Facebook, a private Facebook for um, uh, LinkedIn. Yes, that's the word, LinkedIn. Um, it's like a LinkedIn for young, young Arts winners to apply for grants, to um, apply for showcases all across the US, to meet up with people, to collaborate with people like, it's like a family I, I'm always going to be a part of and I'm just like so I'm still just in shock that any of it happened at all um, and I guess that is that about wraps up my my experience with with young arts oh I started playing in LA too got offers finally to start breaking into LA like so many amazing things have happened in the post all because of the things that I've learned and just how quickly and exponentially I was able to improve um, based on what happened and I met so many amazing friends and it was just the best thing ever. So if you guys have questions for me and want me to look over your videos or anything, just please do reach out to me. I am happy to answer any questions. And that is, that was totally off the cuff. So there you hey, go. Wow. So <laughs> impressive. No script, no notes. Well done, Sawyer. Thank you. Thank you for that. Actually, your, your insights are really helpful. Before we take questions, uh, let's have Nidra um just sort of go over the specifics of the application and then 
we will collect questions and between the three of us be able to make sure that they're all addressed. Hi, Nidra. Hi. Thank you, Chris and Sawyer. So my name is Nidra Ward. I go uh, with pronouns she, her. Um, I am the Associate Director of Winter Programs here at Young Arts um, and basically manage application process and adjudication process along with my other colleagues at Young Arts. So let's talk about the application. It is open. Um, it closes October 13th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern, and that's 8.59 p.m. Pacific. Something to remember um, <laughs> when you are applying. Um, it is on a new platform called Kaleidoscope. Um, so when you go to our website and you look at the requirements, review everything, make sure you're ready to start your application, um, you can go to that platform from our website um, and it will take you to, it's a two part um, application this year because it's on this new platform. The main application is just your basic contact information, eligibility, um, which I will get into too, um, and also um, education information where you graduated from high school if you're if you've graduated or where you're attending. Um, educator, if you have any educators that you'd like to acknowledge by uh, Young Arts acknowledges um, educators who helped you with your application or your artistic career. Um, and then it will automatically take you to the second part of the application, which if you're applying for a voice singer songwriter, it will take you to upload your your three videos and your three PDFs um, in the um, in the media part of the application. And we have these two separated out because the panelists and the judges in the other rounds do not know any, any identifying information about you. So they don't know your name. They don't know where you go to school. They don't know how old you are. Don't know what grade you're in. They know nothing. So that main application is for our records at Young Arts. And then the media part is what they uh, look at and what they're able to see and what they um, evaluate you on. So just wanted to make that very clear. They do not know any identifying information about you until you are named a winner and then they know. <laughs> um, so yes, so just wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me, put that all out there. Um, after the application closes on October 13th, um, we then start adjudications immediately. Um, and so the first couple rounds of reviewers will go through everything and advance um, on to Chris and the rest of the voice panel for deliberations on awarding winners. Um, and that is, oh, uh, eligibility. So you must be between the ages of 15 to 18 or in grades 10 through 12 on December 1st. And that means the or. If you meet the age but not the grade, you're still eligible to apply and vice versa. If you meet both, great. Yes, of course you're eligible to apply. But if you meet one or the other, you are still eligible to apply. Um, and then as we've sort of spoken about uh, a little bit, <laughs> um, winners with distinction are invited to participate in National Young Arts Week and participating in National Young Arts Week as a senior, you would be invited to um, be potentially nominated for Presidential Scholar in the Arts. Um, so aside from Young Arts Week, there's still so much available to all levels of winners. Um, as Sawyer mentioned, Young Arts Post, you can go on to Young Arts Post, which is an exclusive platform just for Young Arts winners. Um, you can network and collaborate with other people. Um, if you are a filmmaker who wants to have a voice uh, singer in your in your film, you can go onto Young Arts Post and say, I have this great opportunity and I'd like to work with a Young Arts uh, alum. So um, Young Arts Post is really great. Micro grants, fellowships, residencies, all of that is available to you, not just in your winning year. So after your winning year, it is a lifetime of support. It is a community um, that you will be joining. So I think I covered everything I wanted to talk about. So we can stop for questions. And Nidra, you're gonna just find questions in the chat, yes? So uh, this one was early on in the conversation. So I think it was already answered, but can I record vocal harmonies on the track? Um, yes. 
<laughs> yes. And I see a bunch of hands raised. Yeah. Uh, let's go with Sienna, if I'm pronouncing that cre correctly. Yeah, you're pronouncing it great. Um, my question is for the audition process, can you use a microphone? Uh, yes, you can. Yeah, so if you if you feel like you've got, you know, uh, the appropriate equipment, but like I said, um, it doesn't have to be overly produced and if it helps with clarity, that's fine. But I also want to make a note that a microphone isn't a requirement. So use what you have and um, just make sure that it's that it helps the clarity of what you're presenting. Thank Good you. question. Thank you. One thing I do want to add to that, because this came up uh, with Latanya. Latanya is um, the pop and jazz panelist, and she specifically wrote in the requirements, make sure that the microphone does not blo block your face, right? block your mouth. So we've we've had issues before with with this type of thing or um, uh, pop filters, large, you know, those those big pop filters that that are acoustic treatments and those types of things. Just make sure that we can we can see all of this and that the microphone is out of the way. So thank you, Nidra. That is true. Uh, OK, next on my screen is Frankie. Hi, um, I was just wondering. So you said we can't use any samples. Does that include like the samples that are on logic? No, right. what I mean, thank you. For, that's a great question, Frankie, and for the distinction. Um, what I mean by samples are unlicensed samples of pre-existing uh, recordings. So you can't use a oh. drum loop from an already existing song or a vocal loop from an already existing song. But digital samples that are already in like a logic library, yeah, those are those are those are tools. So sorry that sa samples do mean separate things in that in that okay. area. Um, and then also, um, yeah, that did. Um, and then also, um, Sawyer, you said we could like send you our videos if we wanted to. How do we like contact you? Yeah, I'll put my like Instagram. I'll put my Instagram in the chat, and we can go from there. Okay, cool. Thank you. Great. Um, uh, Arushi, am I saying that correctly? Hi. Yeah, it's Arushi. Um, I had a quick question about the eligibility. So um, on the website, it says that I have to either be a citizen of the US, a permanent resident or a green card recipient, or I can demonstrate that I'm legally able to receive taxable income. Is that like a major factor for applying to Young Arts? Yes, those are the eligibility requirements, yes. Got it, thank you. Uh, Ethan. Hello, my name is Ethan. I use they and he pronouns. Um, I, I have two questions. Um, so then my first question, when applying for the Young Arts competition, can we apply for multiple disciplines or does it have to be just one discipline? Nidra? <laughs> yes, yeah, so you can apply in as many disciplines and categories as you'd like. Um, something to note is that there is an application fee for each of them, but we do also offer fee waivers to those who are unable to um, pay that fee. And if you're applying in multiple categories, that could get a little pricey. But yes, we do have fee, fee waivers available um, for those who are not able to pay that $35. But yes, apply in as many things as you'd like. And then for my second question, um, it was sort of answered um, by the previous, uh, not previous, but another question a person asked, but um, about um, like loops, like how, um, so then not sampled, so we can't use sampled ones, but loops from a library, what was the? Um, um, like logic and things like that. Yeah, because I use um, Band Lab and I, for one of my songs, I used um, a loop to help um be part of the instrument would that that's like fine. Be, that's fine okay that's fine so again to to draw a distinction the samples we're talking about are pieces of existing recordings mm -hmm. released songs okay. and so forth we can't have that okay so but if it's in a library i do want to pause because again this is this is new for us i want to make sure that if pre-recording tracks are used that there also needs to be a live real-time element of singing of something uh, as well as mm -hmm. that. Um, so what what I would like to avoid, I'll just say this outright, is we shouldn't have anybody just sort of appear on camera and hit the space bar. Okay. Understood? Yes. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there go. Um, 
So how many applicants generally speaking? So across all of the disciplines, we typically get uh, around the last few years, we've gotten around 7,000. And in voice discipline, it's usually just around or under 1,000. And then singer songwriter specifically, I'm not sure, but I know it's it's a few hundred. Um, and then from there, um, winners with distinction, there is a cap on that. Um, the other level of winner is no cap whatsoever, but to attend National Young Arts Week, it's about 20 um, winners with distinction that are invited to participate in Young Arts Week. Voice. For voice, yeah. For voice, yeah. For voice. So yeah, so just to be clear, that's probably like oftentimes five or six songwriters, singer-songwriters as part of the voice category, a part of that 20. Um, for accompaniment, can a loop pedal be used with violin? Yes. I love Chris's answers. Just yep. yes, no, yes, yep. no. <laughs> Back to the hand raisers. Um, Ajuni, am I saying that right? Oh, you're on mute. Sorry. Um, so I'm relatively new to songwriting. I only have like a handful of songs like that I've made. Is that okay? I'm relatively new to it. So I was just wondering. Um, that actually, the answer, the quick answer again is yes. Um, that's, that's perfectly fine. We're, we're evaluating what you present, not necessarily, you know, um, how long of a, of experience you've had. So, so, um, it's, it's really about the quality of what you present. So that's fine. Okay. And one more question. So do you need to be able to like play multiple, be able to play multiple instruments prior to applying or? Okay. No, no. Um, but we are looking at sort of total musicianship. Usually the songwriting mm -hmm. category has some degree, uh, element of what we call self accompaniment. When we saw the videos at the at the beginning of the presentation, you saw that that could be piano, that could be guitar, um, but you also saw Paris, who did it with a um, live um, looping controller, and so that was her self uh, accompaniment. Um, but Sawyer's example of playing guitar, piano, that's not a requirement, so. If you if you do one thing, that's it's perfectly fine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Vanessa. Hi. So I just want to first of all say you guys are all so cool, so impressive. Um, and so I'm gonna especially start with... Sawyer, right? Especially <laughs> Sawyer. Yes. 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 So yes. incredibly impressive. No, I, I'm like. I'm so impressed, like, and I'm from Miami, so it's like so cool that it's happening here. But yeah, I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. But so, um, for produced um tracks, so would I have to play if I have my track completely produced? Um, would I have to play it live? Like, I mean, in the sense of like, in my room, or can I edit it into the video? How does that work? Like specific. So okay, all right. I see. I see. Again, this is our first time, so I'm. Uh, it's really great for me to field these questions as to how you might be navigating. I think both could work. So if you um, play your track live through a speaker, and then um, sing along with it, I think that that would work great, provided that it's, you've got the balances okay. If you've got the technology and the ability to put that maybe through a mixer, to be able to. Uh, line level that into the video along with a microphone so that you can mix it that way that can work okay but once again I want to um, make sure that you're ta tapping into your comfort level and what you have is for technology I don't want to suggest to anybody that you go out and like buy a studio worth of stuff okay just my apologies yeah. one second yes. go ahead Thank you so much. Sorry about that. Um, so pretty much um, it can't really be edited in, in that sense. Um, it's more like playing live. I mean, that's it, fine, yes, but it is. it is. Thank you for clarifying that. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so we want to no, see, we want to see a live real time performance, even though you might, you'll be using a pre recorded track. Okay. Of course. So sorry. So then, cause what I meant was like, 
editing in the version without the vocals and then you sing over it, but you edit that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's, okay. Yes, that's fine. But it's you're singing and performing it in real time, right? Of course. Yeah. Yes. yes. And, I see what, now I see what you mean by editing. Okay. You're take, you're yeah. Yep. Yeah, because what I would do was like I would sing it, but then I'd have um, instead of playing it, so like it sounds better. Like that, that would be my, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as long as it, it is like I'm doing it live yeah. and thank you so much for. Yeah. And we appreciate your prayers. It's, it's new to us. And so we're going to have to have some clarifying questions as people work with uh, these materials. Oh, and by the way, if you just play guitar and sing, that's fine too. <laughs> so <laughs> I want to yeah. make sure that we, w what we're communicating here is, is that we are open to just a wide range of how you present your songs provided that they, they meet the, these guidelines. So thank you for, for mm -hmm. your questions and for your clarification. Thank you so much for the thorough explanation. <laughs> and just one last thing. Um, so when in Sawyer's um, performance, um, he talked a little bit like right before started his performance. Um, is that something that can be done or like in the, in the actual video or no? That was kind of just cause I felt like the song needed some context um so and then also so that no one knew, everyone knew my mom wasn't dead um uh, she's alive and well um but also <laughs> just because it was like a really specific and special story i, I think it just kind of depends chris was like you could say something for like five seconds but make it quick so i was like okay <laughs> okay um i guess i'll do it without for the actual application right oh i didn't apply like that that was more for a live performance setting i yeah. just played the song yeah yeah, that's okay, when you cool. get to play it live. All right. Thanks so much, guys. So, Ava. Hi. Um, it's good to see you again, Chris. Yeah, was, nice to see familiar faces. Good. I was in Chris's um, songwriting section at Grammy Camp last year, so that was nice. Um, this is probably a dumb question, but I'm a grandma and I don't know how to use technology. Um, so if we're just recording a video on your phone, is there a type of file you need to make the video into to submit it? I've had like issues with that in the past, like a type of video file. Um, I just want to give myself time to like figure that out. <laughs> Yeah, we, it's pretty much anything that you can put on YouTube, we accept those file types. Um, you do want to just, um, there's no time limit uh, requirement, but um, if it is an extensively really long song, like over 10 minutes, um, you may need to compress um, the video. But other than that, it's um, any file type really. And is there a um, is there a, a range of minutes that your song should kind of be in between, or is that like very flexible? There's no time limit um, for any of the voice categories, actually. So um, yeah, we we yeah. Uh, that, that that's all true, um, but we definitely um, uh, remember where we're evaluating this, you know, as uh, for it to be also be engaging you know, um, uh, and everything. So um, we want to make sure that you are, um, keep that in mind. How about, how about I just keep this, say that, keep that in mind. Probably not the time to roll out your rock opera. It's like 22 minutes long, right? You know, keep Yeah, Ava's got that one in her back pocket, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> keep, keep in mind your audience and, and the setting and, you know, uh, I think perform, write, select your songs accordingly. We, I, I want to leave it to you. We want to leave it to you so that you put you what you think is best representative of who you are as an artist and a songwriter. Um, but all artists keep, you know, keep in mind who you're playing for, what makes the most sense. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I do want to say we are at time and I know that there is several questions still coming in. Um, I do want to respect everybody's time though. So if you do have a, additional questions that were not answered here, or you wanted to think about later on after this info session, please feel free to one, visit our website. There are FAQs listed, all the requirements are listed. And also you can send an email to apply at youngarts.org for any questions, DM us on Instagram for any questions. 
um, many, many avenues to reach out and contact us for all of your, all of your questions to be answered. And I just want to thank Chris and Sawyer and everyone else for being here tonight. Thank you all for being so um, engaging with your questions as well. This has been a fantastic info session as always. Um, and thank you all so very much. Have a great night. Bye, everyone. Good luck. Bye, all. Good luck. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you.